championship after Roman Reigns showed up with a Superman punch and a spear for one solo Sokoa. Let's hear what he has to say. He is joining us now live at the podium. Hello. <laughs> What's up? Welcome, Cody. We'll head to the front row for your first question. Hi, Cody. Uh, Haley Miller with Comic Book. So you mentioned that this was Pharaoh's last ride with you, mm -hmm. and I'm just wondering, like, how important has it been to have him as part of this journey with you and on this ride? Oh, yeah, so hard one right out of the gate. Uh, you know, Pharaoh's, Pharaoh's 13 years old. For those who don't know, Pharaoh's my husky, he's my dog. Uh, he's 13 years old. The idea, it, isn't the, he's thriving, he's doing great, but he, the pack is at home now. And uh, he's, he's more Libby's dog than he is uh, my dog anymore. Um, but something about Pharaoh that, some people know this, but any, any time I've had like, you know, highs and lows, and particularly the lows in my life, I'm not always the easiest to reach. Uh, and man, I, I remember one time I just sat outside uh, and when I had a home in Dallas and I just couldn't go inside, I couldn't function, I couldn't think. And that dog sat with me from, I don't know, 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. He just never moved. Um, you know, people who have dogs, they get it, right? Uh, he's really man's best friend and I don't want to keep dragging him on the road if he just wants to be home. So we had a fun, fun time here, lots of treats. Uh, the bus driving crew uh, clearly giving them food they shouldn't. Um, but uh, I, I was happy that I got to take that uh, that walk with them. And uh, you know, my other my other dog, Yeti Pinkerton, is just a jobber, just an he's an enhancement dog. But um, <laughs> now it's uh, now it's his time to step up, and I love him. And uh, you know, so it was really nice. I thank WWE for. Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous to ask. Hey, I have my dog here. Okay, no problem. Uh, so it was very kind of WWE to do. I really appreciated it. Hi, Cody. Hey. How are you? Chris to be with those wrestling girls. First mm -hmm. off, congratulations on your win. Thank you. What was your thoughts about going into a Bloodlines rules match, knowing you just had one at WrestleMania 40, and then having Roman Reigns come and give you the assist against Solo Sokoa? I actually think Bloodline rules as a match is my match. We've had two of them, and I've won them both. Um, I know it's not supposed to be for me, and I don't think I have the authority to call for one uh, by any means, but uh, I have won them both. And it's a situation, like I said on SmackDown, it's a dumb decision. It's not the smartest thing to, to jump into that, but it's the only decision I know how to make. Uh, that's the type of you know person that I have been groomed to be here at WWE. I can't say no. And um, I don't want to fill the room with positive platitudes and hot air about, you know, the real tribal chief, uh, Roman Reigns returning, but without a doubt, that probably would have gone a different way. I probably wouldn't be sitting here with the North Star of the industry had it not been for Roman Reigns. So he's certainly a, a, a got quite a list of people who I, I owe one. I might owe him more than one. And again, no love lost. That's as much a shoot as it gets. Um, there's, a, there's a unique uh, relationship, I suppose. Uh, haven't seen or spoken since WrestleMania. Uh, I think the WWE fans, wrestling fans, WWE Universe, they wanted him. And SummerSlam delivered and gave him, and, and that I'm always very happy about. Hey, Cody. Hey. Chris, Chris Van Vliet with Insight. Yeah, let me tell you something, Chris. Uh-oh. The other day, I did it. You all should hear this. Gabby, you've heard this. I'm terrified of doing media, guys, because I did an interview with Chris that I thought was a home run. I just thought, oh, man, I killed it. Didn't say anything dumb. That's a big thing. I didn't say anything dumb. I didn't, whatever. Found out on social media that it was not the best interview and a lot of people were really upset so if you wonder why certain wrestlers have become gun shy about doing interviews and stuff it's just because it's terrifying and uh, you do have a question now is this I'm, a sorry. Genius? I'm sorry no i enjoyed i enjoyed our the interview i did yeah. um and thank you for it no well yeah <laughs> there we go again 
that last crossroads you gave tonight to Solo mm -hmm. felt like it was delivered with a purpose. You're staring at Roman as you're doing it. Where do things go from here with Roman and with that championship? Well, you're a wrestling fan. Where do you think they go? Hey, so you're leaving C. She's gone. She's gone. <laughs> and she's gone. Um, listen, this current WWE landscape, you can't call it. Uh, we, we, we just had a behind-the-scenes documentary on how the best laid plans can just go to hell in one moment because it's just a kind of controlled chaos where these beautiful things happen. I don't know in terms of certainly Roman Reigns is entitled to not just a rematch. I mean, Roman Reigns held this title for so long. That match, it has to happen. And it's in one of those where, to a degree, it's, it's rather, you know, you're not supposed to say this when you're a baby face, but it's rather scary. The idea, I've been in there twice with him, and brother hits hard. Um, so the idea of that is there to do, you know, I don't know if anyone saw it, but I was tapping the title like this. Because I know there's a third one somewhere, some, somewhere down the line. I know I'm not his friend. He didn't do that for me. He did that because of what's happened with the bloodline and Solo. I think that's something to stay tuned for, probably on SmackDown, in a sense of what happens with the bloodline. The bloodline has been the anchor of WWE for some time, and what happens next, not just with Solo, not just with Roman, but Jacob Vatu, who is, as we all can see, there's something unbelievable. Uh, I don't have to like him to tell you that. There's something special there, but there's a lot of match options that are in front of us, and that's for the man who's going to be up here next um, to kind of decide what happens next. I'm always ready. Last question? Oh, come on, Byron. <laughs> Tell me this stuff. Who yeah, told you, Tom? Strong. Uh, Adrian Hernandez of Unlikely. Um, Cody, in your entrance, uh, before you went out, you got to having discussion of that talk with Arn Anderson. How sure. did that feel? How did that come to be? For... Um, for people who follow just the general story and the, the, the road I've been on, Arn is a huge part of it. I had made that decision of when I was with AEW, I had made the decision that, hey, I can't have my dad for this stuff. He's not here physically. I want someone who was with him. And they could have even been, they didn't have to be an ally. They could have been an adversary. He came in and he was such a piece of sanity for me during a really chaotic time and just Arn, is one of the smartest people you'll meet in pro wrestling and sports entertainment. But he's also so ahead of the curve in the sense like, hey, I see where this is going. I, I get a feel for what the business evolves, like all sports, the business evolves. And, and Arn has always been able to be there. For me, it was just special to have a moment with him, um, particularly one where he wasn't threatening to, to shoot me or something of that nature. <laughs> uh, it was it was nice because he means he means a great deal to me. I hope we see more of Double uh, A and and something that this is this is an internal thing. It's inside baseball. If I get in trouble for sharing this, I apologize. But something that WWE did today that I thought was incredible. I've never seen this before. Was all the wrestlers got a text? All of us. Byron, you got it. We all got it about the legends that were going to be here tonight. And not just hey, the legends will be here tonight. Go say hello. Go say thank you. There was a one-sheeter with each of their pictures and a biography. Because, you know, we got a lot of young guns. Tiffany Stratton, for example, they may not know everybody, probably does, but just the idea that the legends are gonna be treated that way here as WWE's entered its greatest era ever, really hats off to Crystal Gentle, Matt Altman, Nick Khan, Triple H, Bruce, whoever came up with it. I thought it was a really brilliant thing. Again, back to Arn, uh, I hope we see more of them, and I hope, uh, He's next to me. Let's do one more, Byron. One more, all right. <clears throat> Into the second row. Um, Gurgur mm -hmm. Bra from TNT Sports. So, it's a little long-winded, but... Oh, yes. I've seen you go from, like, Ted Leaves Arena in Mississauga, Ontario, to yeah. now headlining stadiums at WrestleMania, and now here. You've always wanted to be the quarterback. You've always talked about how you want the ball. And... Now it's a time when you're basically, it's the return of Roman Reigns and it feels like it's the biggest thing that just happened. Sure. 
Where's your head at as far as what this next challenge is? Because you finished the story. Yeah. What's this next new opportunity look like? It's, in a, it's a great question. And uh, a couple of people have kind of asked it uh, behind the scenes in terms of what does that look like? It can't be, you know, two, right? And, and you mentioned the journey I've been on. Cleveland specific is where Stardust started. So I, I, I said it earlier, an, an enhancement guy is now standing here, the guy. Um, with Roman's return, I would say the same thing I said going to WrestleMania last year, maybe it backfired. Yeah. I'm not flinching, not one bit, and I think he isn't either. And that's where, again, WWE's in the uh, stadium business now. God bless you guys for making that, making that a real thing. That's great for that stadium business because uh, it's a good problem to have, and that's a great question. And, I wonder how he feels about it, but not flinching. Cody, thank you so much for your Thanks time, for and congratulations on the team.